This uh, video contains the assembly instructions for the throttle quadrant. This quadrant is a modular quadrant. It is made to use off-the-shelf electronics, in this case the Arduino Pro Micro. It also uses the MMJOY2 uh, firmware to emulate a joystick on your PC. It is made to be as easy 3D printable as possible without supports and it's comprising of several modules which can be assigned to different axes. You can print as many axes as you need. Uh, for example, what I use are five axes, uh, two for throttle, one for uh, air brake, one for flaps, and one for the elevator trim. Let's go to the assembly uh, part. What you see here is an assembled module. This module has some features which make it easy to um, build the final structure. You can see there are two tabs here. Uh, these tabs or um, shafts will provide aligning with any module that comes subsequently afterwards. For example, I have another assembled uh, module of the same kind and you can align them like this and stack them together horizontally and add as many axes as you want. Further, there are two holes on the bottom which will be used to connect all the modules together and fix them on the base plate. For the rest, we have one potentiometer uh, and one switch with two positions on this, um, on this module. So, okay, let's see how we assemble this. Let's go to the assembly uh, process of um, one of these modules. So, as you can see here, I have a module which is completely um, stripped of components. This one is a little bit different than the one I showed you before, in the sense that it has an additional momentary switch. There are actually uh, three versions two main versions of this base plate, one with a momentary switch and one without. The one with the momentary switch has also a detent here. And I will show, show you later on when it's assembled what's the purpose of this detent. Uh, the other uh, ones do not have um, the momentary switch and the detent and can be used for air brakes, trim uh, settings, flaps, um, or something like that. Something else to notice here, we have a decal. This decal in this case is glued. I can uh, show you the decal as it's printed separately and you can print it in a different color. I printed it white because I want to put a piece of paper here and the, the simple way to mount it is just to glue it on. So before you start assembling I would suggest that you check that the holes actually fit the potentiometer and the switch and of course the gears. I um, set the tolerances for my end three so it should be okay. Also I would recommend that you before you mount anything you thread these two holes because they will be uh, later on they will be assembled in a base plate and with two screws Two screws from underneath they will be uh, placed on this base plate but that's going to be coming later so let's go back and start let me think is there anything else that i should add no okay so first of all let's start with the potentiometer this is a high quality potentiometer from um, audio shops the things that you have to make sure is that the potentiometer has a way to tightening to tighten the gear on top of it. It has grooves in this case and it has a slot in the middle which can be um, enlarged if the, if, the, if the small gear doesn't fit. So I've made sure that the, the lip of the potentiometer which prevents it from turning has also a hole where it fits so there's only one way you can put this in. Then attach the screw and tighten it. 
not very tight, but tight enough. Then you can attach the small gear. Just press it in and check that the range of motion is okay. The next thing to mount is the big gear. Now before you mount the big gear, there's one thing that you have to do. Uh, there is a very simple tightening uh, mechanism here and what I've done is I've threaded the beginning of this shaft with a normal screw. So I will show you later on how this is actually uh, controlling the tension of the lever. So let's go ahead and mount it. It doesn't matter now uh, how does it mount as long as it meshes, it, it meshes with the other gear. On the other side, I prefer to use a washer because it it's reducing the friction with the with the with the base plate and prevents from locking. So I'll put that one. Then we have the lever. Now the lever has also a a small amount of pre-process needed. Mm, checked that the hole actually can uh, go into the uh, main uh, gear shaft. And uh, there is an additional hole, which in this case I've threaded, uh, where I place a tightening uh, screw, which will tighten on the shaft of the gear. Additionally, you can see that there is a flap. This will engage the monitor switch for the throttle uh, base, uh, version of the base plate, uh, which can uh, activate uh, reverse thrust or brace, uh, whatever you want. Secondly, there is also an, an, a, a different uh, profile here which will allow um, the placement of the end part of the throttle but more on that later so with the process pre-processing done we can now mount this one the only thing that you have to be careful is that you mount this one uh, as, as uh, in, in such a way that the flap will engage the monitor switch so in this case I'll just press it in like this and it is quite tight now the next thing that we need to do is add the tightening um, uh, washer and it goes with the hand in the beginning but it's quite tight so I'm just using a hand wrench to tighten it and I'm not going to tighten it too much in the beginning just, just to get a little bit of tension. Now I'm getting a little bit of tension, I think this is a little bit too little. So I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more. So now, now I have decent tension here and the lever doesn't move. So now the next step is to tighten this screw. But for that we have to make sure that the range corresponds to the potentiometer. You can now press the, the small gear so that it matches the height of the big gear. Just for aesthetics. And I would suggest you put the lever in a maximum forward position. Now, given this situation, and this one is not tightened yet, we can actually move the pot to the maximum. So now the maximum position of the pot corresponds with the lever maximum position. So now I can actually go ahead and tighten the screw. So now the lever is tightened on this gear and it should just cover the full range. Now you see in this case, I hope it's visible on the camera, we have the detent. So when you press you come easily to this detent. Now I've made it a little bit difficult to go past the detent because during your flight you're not really focused where the where the lever is so it is very clear that you cannot go lower unless you really press it down and that's engaging the monitor switch okay with that done the next thing to do is to mount the switch which is quite straightforward You can also tighten it. Make sure that the switch is in uh, vertical position in here. 
I'm using actually a momentary switch with three positions, down, middle and up. The middle position doesn't do anything, but I can assign anything on the other two. One other, other, things to other thing to consider is that this base plate has a lot of holes. Now, these holes are not that important, but these holes are serving a certain purpose, and that is to route the wires that are going from the potentiometer and the switch and the momentary switch back to the uh, place where we place the electronics, which I'll show you a little bit later. So now we're almost done with this. The only thing that's missing is the end cap. The end cap consists of two pieces, just for easy, uh, uh, easiness of print, and also you can choose this in different colors. So this part has to be glued uh, into, the, into the lever, and when this is glued, I have one which is actually glued, I have the black one which is also already glued, this one simply slides in. Now, the, at the end you can check if you have enough pressure, so depending on how heavy your lever is, this will potentially could fall down on its own weight, but now I have enough tension so that it doesn't do that. So that's the only check that you need to do with the tension. If the tension is too low, just tighten the screw and re-tighten the middle screw. Let's go to the main assembly of the whole throttle quadrant. Okay, just a short before getting the assembly uh, in place, I want to show you the third version of this uh, base plate. And actually this is made to complete your quad, uh, quadrant on the left side and it actually provides control of the trimming for the elevator. You can see that this looks roughly as the trimming wheel on a Cessna uh, 172 uh, with an indication where the takeoff position is. The differences between the normal plate and this in, in regards to the assembly is very similar but the position of the gears has been uh, exchanged. So now we have the larger gear connected to the potentiometer and the smaller one to the wheel itself, which actually makes that we have increased range for the wheel. So we have more accurate control of the position of the pot, which translates to more accurate position of the trimming. So now I can rotate it almost 360 degrees and trim my, my airplane in uh, pitch uh, position. The assembly is very similar. You assemble the potentiometer, you assemble the gears. It's the same situation for the wheel. There is a tightening screw here and there is a, another screw which tightens the wheel to the shaft and you can select how much tension do you want. In this case, the tension is not so important because the wheel is not is quite balanced. So regardless of the position, it will stay there. Okay. What you see here is uh, assembled uh, quadrant with five axes plus the trimming. As I said before, these axes were just set separately and uh, placed together. Now this is not completely attached to each other because I want to take it apart uh, just for you to get a feel on how you need to mount this together. But basically you can recognize we have five axes. I've given different colors for the throttle uh, prop and mixture and these two you can assign. I assign this one for the flaps and this one for the air brake and as I said before this is the trimming wheel for the elevator. Inside here, we can place the electronics module. For now, I have only one, but I think you might need two, depending on how many axes and buttons you want to assign. The uh, Arduino Pro Micro is limited in terms of uh, GPIOs uh, in that respect. Okay, so I'll just take it apart and then assemble it together so that you can see how it, it is supposed to go together. I'm not going to cover the electronics in this video. Uh, for that, I, uh, I would suggest that you uh, look up on uh, YouTube any uh, tutorial on how to make a joystick using uh, Arduino Pro Micro and the MMJoy uh, software.
Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that I want to show you is that the complete throttle sits on a base plate. This base plate will fit the holes on the bottom and they are made slightly larger. So my intention is to use screws from the bottom side and connect these things together. Now, five axis electronics and trimming wheel will generate a base plate large, small enough to be able to be printed on the end and tree on a diagonal. So this is quite long, uh, but you can still print it on the end of tree. If you fancy, you can also make it out of a wood plate if you want to place more axes. So that's not a, uh, not a restriction. You will get anyway the Fusion 360 files and you can add more axes or remove and make your own uh, plate and add additional um, holes to hold uh, this thing together. So that's the idea. We'll see how that works in the end. Now coming back to the throttle itself, as I said before, it's assembled by placing the modules uh, close to each other. So I'll remove the electronics. The electronics has, it's just a little bit more, it's a little bit different. It has longer uh, tabs. And inside here, I will place two of these uh, Arduino Pro Micro modules. They will be wired to all the axes, and here uh, the white detent will provide uh, spacing to uh, insert the USB cable. So it will be placed like this, but actually there is a, there is a space there to actually put a USB cable and access the modules uh, without making any holes. Now this is the electronics part, let's go here now. Each axis is just translated and aligned with each other, so I will remove the flaps axis. As you can see, here I broke one of the, the um, tabs, but it's not no problem. You can still align it and in the end the holes will, will provide the um, rigidity. Then I can remove the, for example, the mixture axis. Then I have the uh, prop axis, for example. I have the throttle axis. These two actually can be assigned to uh, engine one, engine two for airliners. I have here a um, air brake axis, and I have here the trim axis, as I showed before. So the assembly process is very easy. You just take the first axis, in this case, the trim axis, and you place the next one here. With the aligning holes, everything should be okay. All the detents are glued now. Now, I'm not going to glue this one yet, because I don't know how complicated it will be to mount the wirings and the electronics. I can do that later. So I'll just uh, connect it like this and I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the electronics part out. Now I get my base. And I'm going to try to put at least uh, one of the screws in. I've already threaded the... the um, the holes, so that one fits. It's a little bit tricky just in the beginning until you get the first two screws. So now that I got my first two screws in, the others uh, cannot move that much, so I can insert all of them. The base plate is designed so that the distance between the modules is roughly half a millimeter to one millimeter, so they will not be 
super tight together because of tolerances and because of easy ease of um, mounting, you know. Okay, so now I've mounted all the screws. I will show you that actually this will not align it perfectly. I just added a little bit of spacing between these just to make sure that I can fit them together. It's better to have more than less spacing, otherwise they, you can't fit them at all. And this is the uh, mounted quadrant. I think because of my plate, you can see that my plate is a little bit bent these are going a little bit towards the outside but I can easily fix that by uh, uh, switching this 180 degrees and I have to do that anyway because I have to put the wires in uh, the wires inside which I haven't done yet so I have everything mounted on a plate uh, the next thing is to actually um, put the wiring part and the electronics in don't underestimate this part because it could be quite laborious what you need to do is anyway um, I would actually start from this end and solder the wires for the potentiometer and the, the, the switches uh, and then estimate how much do I need to get to the electronics and then go on for each axis until the last one and as I go to the left I can add more axis to the plate um, and at the end I can add this part when all the wires are there and all the uh, wires are connected and um, at the end you can also uh, add and glue this one although it's not really necessary to be glued uh, because when you need to work on the electronics in the future and you want to remove this part you will have this one in the way and that will make it a little bit difficult to uh, access the electronics but basically this is the way to mount it and this is the way it will look in the end you have access to the design files in fusion 360 if you think you want to modify something go ahead uh, do that um, if it suits your design better and I hope you uh, really enjoy this let me know in the comments below uh, it if it was successful and if there are additional instructions that I'm missing I will try to put a link to the electronics that I've used actually the potentiometer and the switch and maybe to the Arduino Pro Micro and the MMJoy uh, software Thank you and uh, have fun with it.